I'm Mo Rocca, and I'm excited to announce season four of my podcast, Mobituaries. I've got a whole new bunch of stories to share with you about the most fascinating people and things who are no longer with us. From famous figures who died on the very same day to the things I wish would die, like buffets, all that and much more. Listen to Mobituaries with Mo Rocca wherever you get your podcasts. Will you be our Valentine? Hi, this is Anita Joyce here with Kelly Wilkness, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks, Episode 456, Valentine's Ideas and Inspiration. And boy, do we love Valentine's Day. And you know what I like about it, Kelly, is I don't feel the pressure that I do on Christmas to really ramp up the house or to do something really, really intense. Would you say that's the case for you too? I so agree. And I do think it's such a fun holiday. You can do something. You don't have to do something. You do something little. You remember somebody, whether it's a friend or what have you, and send them a little something. And it just makes their day. I think it's just a sweet little holiday. As my husband would call it a Don Draper, you know, from Mad Men holiday, like it was Hallmark <laughs> created or Don Draper created. Well, but we don't really exchange cards, so we don't really buy into all that stuff. But I think of it as just kind of a nice holiday. Here's what I think of it as. I don't see it necessarily as a romantic holiday, although that's great too. But I kind of like see it as a time to just make my girls feel special. So we used to always try to get them some chocolates and maybe kind of have a special table and a special meal where they would just feel special. So it was kind of more of a family thing. So that's kind of the approach I'm taking with this is kind of how to make your house feel festive and warm and inviting with kind of a Valentine's theme. And that can be just for you and your special someone, for you and your family, or for you and your friends or, you know, a Galentine's kind of thing. I always do a little something special for the girls when they come down in the morning. And that's, you know, changed over the years as they've gotten older. But, you know, there's always a little something at their place for breakfast. And then we'll have a special dinner. And it's just lovely. I don't use pink in my house as much (laughs) as you do, but there'll be some pink and there'll be some flowers and things like that. Today, we have a bunch of ideas on how people can celebrate this lovely day. Also, maybe add some things to their home or whip something up in the kitchen. And take the spirit of the day into your own hands. I came up with this quote when I wrote my book, and I really love it. I say, don't wait for somebody to send you flowers. Make your own Uh arrangements. Mm -hmm. And you can take that literally or figuratively. And I think it's a kind of a good girl power thing to do. And And it can be very specific in, you know, maybe go get yourself some flowers and create a beautiful arrangement. So that's the spirit of which I sort of approach. Oh, Valentine's absolutely, Day. and that's the thing too. I don't expect anyone to bring me flowers, and I just I usually get some myself and have them on the table. And I wanted to talk about a few specific things that I found. Uh, what about a garland or bunting of champagne gold hearts? And these got great reviews on Amazon, and you could cut these into shorter strings. It's, it's fifty-two feet of them. Oh my gosh! And so you could I, well, I think it may be several strands of thirteen feet or whatever. But you know, you could kind of string them together. Uh-huh. Or separately. I mean, that would just be so fun to have that in your dining room all set up. Very inexpensive, too. I mean, less than, I don't know, $15 or something. So, you know, an inexpensive thing. But it just looks so pretty in the room. That's so cute. I have some specific items, too. But I thought I'd kick off with a few things that you could make. Now, these are really easy. And you can keep them year to year. I did this wooden X kiss many years ago on my blog, and I get so many comments on it, you know, throughout the years. I had found some salvaged wood, and I was like, this is such a cool patinaed piece of wood. What can I do with it? And I just kind of crossed them all, and I thought, oh, kisses, (laughs) hearts and kisses, you know, hugs and kisses. So I cut them, and and I glued them, and that was the end of it, and I put them on my mantle, and I did a blog post on it, and the crowd went wild. Great idea. So anyway, it's just a simple thing to do, and you don't have to find Mm -hmm. patinaed wood. Mine just happened to be, in fact, I kind of pulled them out of a trash (laughs) can at a client's house because I was like, wait, let's not throw that molding out. (laughs) I think I can make something out of that. But you could just get regular wood. You can paint them any color you want. You could try to distress them if you wanted. So I'll put a link to that blog post in the show notes. Again, super easy. You could use with me. Maybe you've just got some little pieces of wood on hand. You can make them big or small. And it's just really cute. Great on the idea. Mantle. And hey, not even shaped like a heart. So it's very creative. 
not even shaped like a heart, but they kind of get, you get kind of get the feel of it. And I do love pink and my daughters love pink. So I also found some charming heart-shaped pink votive candles that are unscented. So you could use them with a meal. I think they'd be pretty on the table. It'd be so pretty to have these scattered around. Again, if you want to take a nice soak in the tub, you can put them in the bathroom or I like your point. People really shouldn't use scented mm-hmm. candles when they're eating. It just kind of really messes up the meal. So that's nice that you could use them on Valentine's Day while you're having dinner and not worry about them smelling like I don't know, <laughs> some candy tufts or, <laughs> or roses or something like that. Uh, another really easy DIY, and this is what I use pretty much every year for Valentine's Day for my girls. I had got these sort of mid-sized jars and I painted them with chalk paint and then wrote their names on the outside of them. I had a little red ribbon. I think the ribbon maybe has little white hearts on it too. And I got these little, uh, they were vintage keys, but you can purchase, uh, you know, little packs of like the crafting, like, like little skeleton keys. And I attached them to the top of the jar with the ribbon, kind of like key to my heart. Inside, I put some shredded fluff. And so it's a very contained area. So you can't put too much in there. So it's kind of great for a holiday like this. Maybe you get a few great little chocolates and put it in there. And when they were little, maybe I stuffed in a poly pocket or something small. And then as I got older, I like junior high, I think I segued to $20 bills wrapped in red and white <laughs> baker's twine, you know, and stuck it in there. So throughout the years, this has kind of been the thing that they find at their spot for breakfast. And then inside, just little treats to start that the day so on sweet. Valentine's Day. I love that. Yeah, I used to be really crafty. <laughs> I know, you're so crafty. Well, I used to do that so much, especially when I had my Girl Scout troops and my girls were little and wanted to do all of that. I was doing so much more of that on the blog. So uh, that is just fun to get lost in a craft. Both of those you could do literally in an hour. I think that your Valentine's Day celebration should include some sort of special meal somewhere along the way, whether it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or afternoon tea. But I love the idea of having heart-shaped plates. And I actually have some that have green plaid ribbon on them. Uh, I mean, they're ceramic. They're hand-painted. I've had them for years. So I actually, they double for Christmas plates because they're green. And then because they're heart-shaped, I use them for Valentine's Day as well. And I stack them with my purple plates. So I, because I don't think I have, oh, well, I have pretty. a few pink plates, but not too many. So I stack them with the purple. I just think the purple and the green goes so well together. And then I have some pink flatware. Pink so flatware. Of wow. Of course, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, what can I say? <laughs> what are you pulling out of that <laughs> Narnia closet? I don't yeah, even know. Yeah, I put a lot of stuff in there. But anyway, I found some really charming pink ceramic plates that you can get. And I'll include the link uh, where you can get them. But so, because mine, of course, aren't available anymore. But these were really cute. Talking about floral arrangements, think out of the vase. Uh, Look around your house or look at a local thrift store. And certainly can be for Valentine's Day or any time. You can put flowers in so many things. And just about anything, if you're able to slip in a little jar or a mason jar or something to hold the water, which I do suggest uh, in any non-conventional vase, you're not sure whether or not it's going to be watertight. So I have a blog post on this where I did a Valentine's table, and I used an old Louis Sherry oh. candy tin. I don't know if you can picture that, but it's tin. You know, it is tin. You've and done it- one with the oatmeal tins, too, I've seen. Right, right, right. Right. And so this one was kind of a lidded box. And you could imagine years ago, probably had like two or three mm-hmm. layers of chocolates in it. So I just, I did some, several short, uh, might've been those little glass yogurt jars mm-hmm. that we used to talk about using all the time. And so I had a, maybe four or five of those in there. And I put the flowers in those and sat it inside. And then the lid kind of closed a little bit. If you can't get a visual on that, I'll have the link in the show notes, but it was such an a fun way to do the flowers and especially for valentine's day because it was candy tin in a previous life it really looked pretty so think about ways that you can use different objects to hold flowers and it's going to just be spark up your centerpiece for sure i love that idea kelly and this is such a great idea because i collect as you know old antique china and i have a lot of old terrines that are gorgeous, but you know what? They may have a crack here or two, and so they're not really going to hold water anymore. Uh, So the best way to handle that is to put some glass jars in there, and then you're going to put your flowers in the jars. And so this works even with old 
uh, China. I have a pitcher that's so pretty, but again, it's a, it's a, um, a porcelain pitcher. It's got a crack in it. Same thing. Just put the glass jar in there. And the other thing is, if you have a terrine, I think it's so beautiful to fill with flowers. But if, but again, such a wide mouth at the top, you're, you're going to have a difficult time getting all the flowers to stand up and not fall over. So unless you put in about four or five floral frogs to hold the the flowers up in, you can put tape across the top. Or like I do, just put the glass jars in there. And I've done that with peonies in a massive spode terrine that I have and I just put those in there and it just kind of covered it up and you couldn't even see the the glasses if you fill it up enough you can't even see those glass uh, glasses inside oh absolutely and don't you turn your nose up to a lidless terrine you could probably get one at yeah certainly you could thrift them or even at a nice antique store if it doesn't have a lid they're going to sell it to you for a lot less so you can use that for well, you know, one of our favorites, just putting fruit and things like in it. But I love this idea of putting the smaller jars in. And, you know, the whole idea of keeping uh, cut flowers fresh is that the water needs to go up the stem into the flower, right? So the shorter the stem, the longer uh-huh. they'll last. Normally, you know, if you if you cut the stem correctly, you don't smash it and you, you do it on an angle for probably 96% of the flowers want it on an angle. But, you know, if you do all those things right, it's the water's got much shorter distance to travel. It might last a lot longer. Well, that's so interesting too, because I also uh, subscribe to the idea that if you cut them on cut flowers, if you keep cutting them every couple of days, they'll last longer. So by the end of the, it's a week or two down the road, My flowers are usually pretty short anyway, because I've been trimming them all along. A fresh cut is always a good idea. But, you know, if you're going to change the water, you might as well just give them a fresh cut. So in addition to the flower idea that you had in the unusual vases, uh, well, and I think that's a very important idea. I think that having some flowers somewhere is really a fabulous idea. And really, that's going to make everything feel special. Even if you just did one thing, I'd probably do the flowers because those fresh flowers just feel so special. Now, another thing that I would add, and this is something that you can use year round, is remember last episode, we talked about the lighted birch tree. Use yes. it Valentine's Day. And you can hang some little heart uh, ornaments on it if you like, or not. You really don't have to, but it's got the beautiful lights. If you don't have that, but you have some string lights, those are great too. String those around the room. Or 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 if you have the smaller yeah. fairy lights, put them in a lantern. Just so you want to have some kind of special light in the room. Make it festive, make it beautiful. Uh, another idea with flowers, and if your Trader Joe's has what my Trader Joe's has, there's a, those curly willow branches right now. They've actually been out since sort of January. So I think they're still going to be going strong. I saw the pussy willows sort of coming back, and that's always a harbinger of spring. So that seemed a little early. But if you can find the curly willow branches, they are beautiful mixed in with tulips, particularly the pink ones for Valentine's Day. So the tulips are kind of let them go loose and let them sort of fall wherever they will, as tulips do, and then put in the curly willow and they'll be taller. And that can be such a beautiful type of arrangement. And you could even, if you were really wanted to take it to the next level, work in some fairy lights somewhere in there. Oh, Just but obviously not in the water. <laughs> not, <laughs> I was going to say, obviously, don't put the battery pack in the water. If you did something where there was a jar and then you had a bigger vase like we're talking about, you could slip the battery pack in between. And let's go back to the heart-shaped things. I think having some heart-shaped foods is a fun thing to do. And I've got a heart-shaped egg ring or a pancake ring. So you could use that. You just pour the battery. You put it on the griddle and pour your batter in or pour your egg in. And then it just cooks in that shape. So that's a fun thing to do. And I found uh, a, a, actually it's silicon mold for a heart-shaped food, and I'll include the link. But this is, you could make muffins in it. You can use it in the oven for cupcakes or muffins. But also you could put chocolate in there to shape chocolates. It's, it's It's a silicon mold, so you could actually pop those chocolates out. Or even if you want to make soaps. I mean, it's, you can use it for whatever you want. But I just think that's a fun thing to do too. Oh, that is. And I have one recipe and it is heart-shaped, so I might as well mention it now. I found this on Michael Worm's website, Inspired by Charm. He does a lot of wonderful foods and just really fun takes on foods and different drinks. And it's his brownie cheesecake hearts. I have not made them, but 
uh, any of his recipes that I've ever tried, I've always been really happy with. But these look so darling and so yummy. So we'll put the link to those in the show notes as well. Sounds great. Well, the other thing I was thinking of for Valentine's Day, now I'm not suggesting you do this because this is kind of over the top expensive, but we're going to use this as a jumping off point. So Fortnum and Mason has all these hampers and they have a hamper for every occasion. And the Fortnum and Mason is a high end grocer that's been around for about 200 years in, in the UK. So they're, they're, they're in London. Uh, and so they had, I found, because I thought, I wonder if they have a special Valentine's hamper this year. And sure enough, they have a hamper called the Lockdown Lovers Hamper. Oh my gosh, that is so cute. <laughs> <laughs> well, and they've been in lockdown so much. I thought it was such a charming idea. Now, this one was about $251 plus shipping, and I don't think this one ships to the U.S. anyway, so I'm not suggesting you get it, but here's what's in it. So it's in this beautiful wicker hamper, or we would call it a picnic basket, and this particular one had dark macadamia nut cookies, rose petal and prosecco jelly, a chocolate-covered raspberries, a jar of Stilton cheese, a bottle of, well, actually had two bottles of wine, crackers, rustic mustard, pickle spread, a tin of Ceylon tea, a box of assorted chocolates, and it's in, the, of course, the Fortnum & Mason hamper. And I thought, this is such a great idea because you know what? You can make your own hamper. What about getting a hamper uh, at the store? And you could probably go to someplace like World Market and find one or you know order it online, but you could probably go out and buy one. Uh, even just an open basket, and then fill it full of all these special gourmet treats and then bring that home. And how fun is that? And then you can have some wine and cheese and some chocolates. Um, I just, I've done that before for special occasions, just bring a basket home and filled it full of gourmet foods and everybody loved it. Yeah, I think that is just such a fun way. And I'm sure when you did it, the presentation was just over the top. So that's part of the fun too. You put in the fluff and, you know, you have it color coordinated and all of that. I think that's a really great idea. And what a wonderful gift. Well, and if you do it yourself, you know, you can put whatever you want in there. You can put some special books in there. You can put some homemade foods in there. Uh, You can put, uh, there's just so Mm -hmm. many fun ways to do it. But if you are in the U.S. and you do want a Fortnum and Mason hamper. They do sell them, for example, at Williams Sonoma if you want to. So that's that would be a really nice luxury item, but very much a luxury. Those are expensive. Really, a lot less expensive if you do it yourself. But yes, it would be nice just to order <laughs> that's one an and option. Have it show up in the door too. Hey, we'll be right back with the rest of the show, but keep listening so we can continue bringing you DTT. Inevitably, with the new year come wellness goals. One very effective and easy-to-reach goal is to add DOS to your wellness regime. DOS is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health, potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with DOS to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing DOS two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with DOS about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give DOS a shot and invest in your health like I have, DOS is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. That's dosedaily.co.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. Go ahead, clean out your closet, then head straight to Quince. I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor, and I can really recommend their Ultra Stretch Super Wide Leg Pant at $49.90. The price is unbeatable, and the look is so flattering. It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. 
And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with Quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with Quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365-day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365-day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. Okay, let's get back to eating some chocolates before our green chef <laughs> I know. food arrives. I know. What did I say about heart-shaped brownie cheesecakes? Well, it's just one day or night a year. It's okay. Another food that I think of for Valentine's Day are macaroons, the French macaroons. So there's a few shops near me that I love to go and buy them at. So that's something, and it's, you know, they're kind of expensive. Another thing that's kind of, but it's a special treat. It's a special day. And so it's always fun to go get an assortment in a real pretty box. They're so pretty. Just look at them. (laughs) So don't eat them. Just buy them and look at them. I was going to say, and along with those, I think get, to me, it's also a visual treat. So, I mean, it's really kind of about having things that look kind of beautiful. So I try to use, I have some really old candy dishes, which are basically little jars with lids and they're footed. And I just like, they're glass so you can see what's in them. I love filling them with kind of pretty candies around the holidays. So I one of, the, one of them I usually fill with those pink and white and I think red M&Ms. That's so grand millennial. I love it. Using the, the cut crystal footed candy dish. <laughs> and I would have to tape the top on it so I didn't eat it all day long. But it does look really pretty. <laughs> okay, you can add a little touch of pink with really inexpensive pink velvet Ah. pillow covers. I'm pretty sure I bought this exact pair a bit ago for one of my girls' rooms because they do have some pinks in their rooms, even though I don't have it on the first floor. Uh, They're really nice, and you can also get them from Ikea, but they don't always have the same colors all the time. They kind of rotate them in and out of that velvet pillow collection, which it has, you know, some Ikea name, which I can't recall. But there are uh, sets on Amazon. I'll link to the one that I believe I have purchased in the past. The velvet is very nice, zipper closure, you know, just the cover. So I think they come in a pack of two. It's like twelve ninety nine. Nice. Very nice. Good deal. We're kind of on the same way, same wavelength here because I'm thinking pink velvet too, but I thought of pink velvet ribbon. So I thought, wouldn't that be so nice to use these, uh, to use some pink ribbon and just kind of maybe put it in the room wherever it is you're celebrating. Maybe just kind of tie a bow, take the ribbon down, don't throw it away, but keep it. And then you can use it later to put it on a, a package uh, for Christmas or a birthday or something. No, I love that idea. And again, you know, so many of our decorating for the holiday tips are so easy, repurposable, reusable, all of that. You don't have to go nuts. And if you wake up on February 13th and you're like, oh, I haven't really thought of anything for Valentine's Day. Well, yeah, you probably have some pink ribbon somewhere. Make it easy. Make it beautiful. Make it festive. And most of all, just enjoy the day. Well, and then if you like the hamper idea... Go get a hamper, and then anytime you have a special occasion, you've got it to just go fill it up. In fact, we have a little special hamper that we use at the farm that we fill up with cheese and maybe a a glass of wine. It's it's actually one of those, uh, and I'll include a link so you can find something similar, but it's got the wine glasses in it. It has the cheese board. It has napkins in there, cloth napkins. It's, It's a little, and it's got a little holder for a bottle of wine, and you can just take it on a picnic. Oh, I love that. I always look at those. And I'm like, oh, I you need one. one of those. But then I thought, I don't know if I'll ever use it, but maybe if I had it, I would. For us, yeah, we do actually use that more. You got to carry your cheese in something, right? Your cheese and crackers. Of course. Yeah, that would be fun. Um, How about some little gift ideas? Maybe you just want to give a little something, whether it's to your children or your significant other, or maybe your girlfriends or your grandma or your aunt or your mom or your sisters and things like that. So I always like to think of something small. This year, I'm thinking about dropping a few things off to different people's houses. And I was just going to do 
mason jars and little floral arrangements. Oh. Super easy, pretty tag. I have, um, you know, I call them those two tags, but you know, those are sort of vanilla tags. And I tea stained them and I have a stamper that has a crown on it. So I think I'm going to, you know, tie them up with that and write a little something Aww. and just leave it by the door. It won't take long. It'll be a couple of packages of flowers from probably Trader Joe's. But another idea, uh, because I do send things to my mom and my three other aunts at Valentine's Day. I started doing this a couple of years ago because like, Christmas is such a hubbub and there's so much flying around. I think, well, Valentine's Day would be nice because they're kind of, it's it is. kind of unexpected. So I started doing this. Yeah. Right. So I started doing this about five years ago and they all live on the East coast. So I don't see them very often. So I, one year I did a picture of them that I had that I don't think they even knew I had, which was a great picture and pretty frames and sent them out. But this year, again, sacrificing myself for the podcast, I was doing some research on Etsy this morning and I found the loveliest lavender oh. sachets. Now, Anita and I used to do fabulous mm -hmm. stacked trio of lavender sachets, which was kind of a big thing with ribbon and, you know, sometimes an embellishment. These are very small. You could probably get away with maybe one extra stamp oh, on the, a nice. regular card. Yeah. So they're two and a quarter or two and a half by two and a half. So a little square. But this woman on Etsy made them all from uh, antique white embroidered oh. linens you know the stuff that you see and you think oh nobody uses dresser scarves anymore you know what's going to happen to that and oh, here i am wow. like save all the dresser scarves like i have a bin of stuff like that but i haven't really turned them into anything since we had our shop but this woman is what so a great i great idea yeah so i bought 10 of them today so i'll put the link to her a shop her name is amy but i'm super excited they're beautiful we gave you a lot of great ideas and inspiration for Valentine's Day today, and it's the 10th, so you <laughs> yep. better get on it. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the hot topic? It is a House Beautiful article. Jim Dove makes the case for a wallpaper backsplash. So uh, the article is about this hand-painted De Gournay wallpaper that he used as a backsplash in the kitchen. It's stunning, it's gorgeous, and the way he did it was he used museum glass in front of the wallpaper, which I think is such a clever idea. Uh, now, uh, this is very expensive wallpaper, but I'm thinking, why couldn't you, well, and it said in the article, it suggested, why not use some wallpaper that you've picked out that might, may not be hand-painted, and then you can have a uh, tempered glass cut to size and use that as a backsplash. And I thought, what? a fun idea. I mean, you could definitely do that. And that just never occurred to me. So what'd you think? It's beautiful. I've seen painted backsplashes with then glass over it, but sometimes the glass kind of, maybe, maybe it's frosted and the color's just coming through a little bit, but I really never have seen wallpaper done the way he did it in a kitchen. Mm -hmm. It is stunning. I mean, first of yes. all, that wallpaper is just to die for. It's more like if you haven't seen that his or that type of wallpaper, it's more well, like it's hand painted, so it's right? Very so it's big. it really is a mural. Yeah, yes. stunning. But it works so well in that kitchen, and even though it's sort of mural like, even and there's cabinets and whatnot, it's just beautiful. So I suggest everybody just take a look at that. And so many people struggle with their backsplash. We've had so many questions about that, and many of you have painted your backsplash to great success. So this is just another option. And I don't know that this would be an inexpensive option because even if you got, you know, you didn't get hand painted wallpaper, museum glass or some tempered glass, you know, that's going to be expensive. You have to somebody to cut it, but it's spectacular. Well, I don't know that. I mean, if you already have tile there, I mean, obviously you would have to pay to have that pulled out. So that would be expensive. But if you were doing right. this versus yeah. paying someone to do the tiling and I mean, you were starting from scratch, I don't know that it would be more expensive than a tile backsplash or a marble backsplash. Oh yeah. No, I see what you're saying. I was thinking of, you know, a, a uh, renovation project, but if you're starting from the beginning. Oh, right. Renovation. Yeah. I, it's probably yeah, comparable. That would be, that would be a lot. <laughs> I mean, unless you were going to just get rid of it anyway. Right, right. But you could think about this. I was thinking even in a, you know, maybe a bathroom. Like everybody, some people are skittish about putting wallpaper in a bathroom. Maybe you could figure out a way to do it mm -hmm. in a bathroom as well, you know, behind the sink. I would love to do wallpaper 
in our bathroom. But I think, uh, it, you know, I love him dearly, but Peter's like a duck uh, splashing in a pond. I don't know what well, he does. It depends on the wallpaper because the some of it all wet. does not hold up well to water, whereas other wallpaper uh, just seems to be better coated and it just holds up better. I had actually bought some French wallpaper one time that was, um, I know this is going to sound bad, it was green and red toile, which sounds bad, but it was actually very pretty. And it really held up well to, to being splashed, but... It was so heavy uh, that my wallpaper person, of course, I'm not talented enough to do it, but she hated putting it. She said it was so hard to do. Oh, I love that you had a woman wallpaper person. Oh, yeah. She actually loved doing wallpaper, which is just like crazy. (laughs) I bet somebody actually likes doing that. Yeah. Wow. Well, I think it's a great thing to know about. And I love Mm, seeing the kitchen that he did. So great article to bring to our attention. BritBox just keeps getting better. The new Archie is amazing. And it's not the comics. It's about Cary Grant. Archie is the brand new limited series starring Jason Isaacs as Archie Leach, the man who became Cary Grant. From the award-winning screenwriter of Philomena, Archie tells Grant's born in Britain, made in Hollywood story, the dramatic grit to glamour transformation that led him to become one of the most famous people in the world. You are going to absolutely love the acting, but also the styling, the outfits, the scenery. It's the first time his story has been told in collaboration with his daughter, Jennifer Grant, and ex-wife, Diane Cannon. The performances from Jason Isaacs and the rest of the cast are amazing. And it's only available on BritBox. So sign up for BritBox today to stream Archie and other fan favorites from any device. And we have a special limited time offer for our U.S. and Canadian listeners. Get 50% off. Yes, that's 50% off your first month when you sign up for a monthly plan. But only if you go to BritBox.com and use our promotion code DTT at checkout. You're going to love Archie. So head over right now and get 50% off your first month of BritBox. Use the promotion code DTT at BritBox.com. Pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well, and we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. How about your crush? Well, it's a very practical crush. I found a situation where I kept buying these stick vacuum cleaners and they kept dying on me. So it was like $100 here, Mm -hmm. $100 there. And at some point you're just like enough already. But I've kind of sold on the idea of I really like the stick vacuum that's cordless because my big heavy vacuum is kind of hard to pull out. So I caved and I bought the Dyson Mm -hmm. stick vacuum. Um, My friend Peggy has one and she just was raving about it. So I bought mine yesterday. And I was at Costco, and they had a model Ooh. there uh, that was $100 off. Mm-hmm. So it was like, okay, it's a sign. Oh, my gosh. It's a sign. So, uh, yes, yeah. I've, I've, I've already charged oh, good. it and used so- it some today. And, and I'm going to try to convince my family that it's fun using it, that it's like a fun thing. You know, like Finn <laughs> in the painting, like washing the fence. But actually, yeah. I, I actually enjoy it. Oh, yeah. The nice so thing about fun. it is that you can... Uh, uh, I just feel like I'm going to be do a better job of keeping the floors clean rather than on a set schedule of saying, okay, it's day, my time to clean the floor. When there's a mess, I'll just go and get it right away. Or if I see something. 
Right. And it's not some right. big hassle. Right. So yeah, I'm very excited yep. about it. It's gotten f- very good reviews and I'll, uh, I'll include some links. Okay. Mine is gluten-free pasta. Ah, now which kind? Um, Rumo. It's R-U-M-M-O. Rumo. I bought it first at the South Pasadena Farmer's Market in the summer, and I thought, oh, gosh, that's maybe the only place I can get it. I don't see it in the grocers, even the higher-end grocers here. And so I decided, you know, Mm because we're Google Masters, to Google it, but it took me a while to think about that. And sure enough, I found a market online, an Italian market that sells it. So I ordered it up. Again, sacrificing for the podcast. (laughs) I ordered some today. It's it's, um, from the Alma Market, A-L-M-A, Gourmet Market, um, an online Italian market. So you can get a lot of different things there, different olive oils. The pasta is from Italy. Uh, I don't think the Alma Market is in Italy. No, they're in America, but that's where the pasta is from. No, 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 but I mean it's shipped from Italy. Yes, yes. Oh, very interesting. Uh, but it was very reasonable. Four ninety nine. Sure, is a little bit more than you know your lower priced box of pasta on the grocery shelf. I highly recommend it because my one daughter try, is trying to be gluten free, doesn't like it, and Peter and my other daughter have no interest in it. And I served this one night, you know, blind. Mm-hmm. I didn't tell them that it was gluten free, and nobody. <laughs> Some of them knew. are quite good, and actually, my. Very favorite gluten-free pasta is the Trader Joe's Red Lentil Penne, and it's high, high in protein. So it's not going to mm-hmm. leave you with that sinking feeling that a lot of pasta does because, you know, it just kind of drops your blood sugar. So that's going to really hold it with the protein. And they have a right. yellow right. lentil spaghetti. Oh, okay. So I've tried, like, not Trader Joe's, but like chickpea and stuff like that. No, no, this is really bad. good. And here's the other thing, bad. a problem I have with the gluten-free pastas because – a lot of them just fall apart. A lot is made from rice and other things. Quinoa, they just kind of, they just kind of, they disintegrate. But this red lentil pasta holds yeah. its shape like, like wheat pasta. Well, that's the thing about this. And that's even oh, in their okay. description. And that it actually, you know, it really holds, not only holds its shape, but then it oh, holds yeah. on to the sauce, you know, because mm-hmm. you want to pick the right shape for your sauce and all that. So okay. I highly recommend it. It's been taste Excellent. tested at our house. So if anybody, yeah, even if you're not really trying to be gluten free and it's just, you know, you maybe you just want to lighten up in that department, get a couple boxes and see what you think. Okay. So our question today is about um, window treatments, which really stump mm-hmm. a lot of people, I think, right? So Denise S is asking, about what she should do about her sliding door. Now, she's got a, a couple of different things going on in her particular space, but we'll, we'll try to keep it general so it applies to mostly everyone and then give Denise a, a little bit more detail on her specific space. But she's got some plantation shutters, uh, flanking a sliding glass door, and then she's got some panels in between the 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 uh, plantations and the sliders, but they're kind of decorative from what I can tell. And there's some vertical lines involved as well. So, Anita, well, do you I think kick the question was um, whether or not to have the curtains all the way up the ceiling or have them right on top of the, the sliding glass door. Would you say that's the main question? Mm hmm. Yeah, okay. I would say that's a good uh, part. So mm-hmm. I think, um, Denise, I would put those curtains all the way up at the ceiling. I don't think there's any difference with a sliding glass door than a window. You want to put those curtains up as high as you can. And so, and looking in your room, it just looks like it's, uh, well, it looks like it's what, like a foot or two. But I still think I would still go up to that, uh, to the bottom of the uh, crown molding. We're saying if you're going to put drapes over the slider, put the rod up at the top. And Denise, I would say there's just a lot of different window treatments going on in that one room. I would probably take the vertical blinds down. And if you can use the drapes to shield the sun or gain privacy and you can let go of the, those mm-hmm. verticals, I would do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What and I've think? had uh, curtains like this that are high up, and you just kind of, you know, you can get a little long rod used to just kind of close them, so you don't need to use those vertical blinds. And, yeah, I would I would take those down, too. And we, 
one of our houses that we moved into years ago had the vertical vertical blinds so um but yeah i think the curtain is going to look so much better yeah and then in denise's specific situation has those what appear to be decorative panels coming down from the way top as we're discussing and flanking the sliding glass door i would take those extra decorative panels because they don't go all the way across and just take those off and have a rod that goes all the way across and then the drapery that now will come in place of the decorative drapes so it looks like it's kind of a balance so you're saying remove the balance yeah Mm -hmm. i think in this particular case i would remove this particular balance and just have the curtains yeah so hopefully that helps Denise. And then if anybody else is struggling with window treatment issues, you know, you could always send us an email and we'll see if we can give you a good answer on air. And uh, remember, we are here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time, want to talk to us? Well, we really want to talk to you. So let's schedule a design consult. And Nita and I are here to give you individualized, actionable advice on how to create the beautiful home you want and deserve. It's so easy to schedule a design consult with us. Simply click the link in the show notes or head to decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. When we talk to you on the scheduled time, we will be ready with so many great tips, advice, and yes, tricks. So sign up today for a design consult with Anita and I. We can't wait to talk to you.